Hey, Tracy, I'm so excited to have you on here today and honored really, because you're doing such big stuff in the cannabis space. And I, like I was telling you before we started recording, you're the first cannabis themed episode that I've had on Inside Out Health Podcast. So thank you so much for being here. And I, I love that we're going to start off by talking about canna kids, right? So we're not just talking about cannabis, we're talking about kids. And yes. Can you tell us a little bit of your background so that um, people can get to know what you're all about? Absolutely. And thank you again for having me. That's so cool that I'm the first. I love that. Um, yeah. So it all started over seven years ago now when my daughter, Sophie, was diagnosed at eight and a half months old with a low grade brain tumor. It's called an optic pathway glioma. Uh, it's grade one, meaning that it will never spread throughout the rest of her body. It is considered benign by nature, but because it's in the brain and it's inoperable, they do deem this cancer. It is treated like cancer. You have to go through chemotherapy, but the survival rate is much higher. So traditionally it's about a 90 plus percent survival rate, but the bad side is it there's an 85% recurrence rate. So these kids can be in chemotherapy for years and years and years. I've got a, a patient right now that's been in chemo for 18 years since she was seven months old. And my daughter, Sophie, just got off of six years of chemotherapy. And the reason being is because the can, chemo only goes after dividing cells. And when you have a slow growing tumor, the cells don't divide that often. So if the chemo is going into the body and there's no cell division, the best case scenario is you arrest the development of these tumors, but they never actually go away. So that's the big challenge. And you're you're really constantly fighting this beast and then you have puberty and and that can also those hormones can can really kick those up. So when Sophie was diagnosed, it was of course devastating for my husband and I because this kid was literally the picture of health. I did everything right in my pregnancy. I ate right. I had the most incredible, I never even got sick once. I was that pregnant lady. Everybody hated that was pregnant. Because <laughs> everything just went amazing for me. The birth was amazing. She was super healthy. There was no trauma or stress. And then one day her eyeballs start shaking and that led us through a string of doctor's appointments that then led us to an MRI in the same week. Um, we you know, first started taking her to the hospital on Monday. By Friday, she was in an MRI. And by that weekend, she was diagnosed with this tumor. So when we got the news, it was I mean, that that in like reliving that moment on a regular basis is probably one of the tougher things that I have to do um, when having these types of conversations, because it was it, it's like reliving a death. It was the death of the life that we had as we knew it. And it was the death of our child's childhood as we knew it to be. And when they told us that, you know, these tumors are so rare, they only equate for 3% of all brain tumors in pediatrics. It was one of those things when we actually learned about how much research was being done for kids, which is basically none, we really knew there wasn't going to be much for our kid that was new. And then we learned that only 3.8% of all government funding goes to pediatric cancer research and that there's only been four new drugs brought to market in 40 years for wow. kids with cancer, wow. which is just gross. I mean, seriously, these kids wow. are the future. Like they haven't gotten to have their first dance. They haven't gotten to have their first kiss. They haven't gotten to you know, feel love or have a boyfriend or graduate high school or do all those things that we as adults have all been able to experience and learn from and, and enjoy. So we were really desperate to try and find something outside of just Western medicine that we could use on Sophie to be supportive. We were looking at everything from Kangen water to vitamin C infusions to turkey tail mushrooms to essential oils. I mean, the gamut, the oxygen chambers, you name it. So Brzezinski method, everything that we could possibly think of that would help so and we originally had uh, a group of people or it was actually my my husband's um friend that he used to live with when he and i first started dating that moved to india that contacted us and was like hey i've got a, a group of people that say cannabis is the way and this was like seven years ago. And I'm like, all right, stoner, <laughs> you know, I'm not going to listen to you. I want to go back to Facebook where all these other people tell me about vitamins and diets mm -hmm. and no sugar and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And then within probably, I think it was around, you know, a week or so after Sophie's diagnosis, we got put in touch with talk show host and uh, actress Ricky Lake, who I watched on talk shows for 10 years growing up and is really American pie uh, and her production partner, Abby Epstein. And these women did the movie, The Business of Being Born, which was the movie that inspired yeah. me to try and have a natural birth with my own daughter, which I did. I, I was awake for two days and in labor for 24 hours 
before I ever had to call in the drugs because I started having double contractions and you know it, it, there's there's only so much pain a body can handle. Yeah. And, but but I but I was already inspired by these women. I believed them to be really caring women who cared about parents and children, and they brought us cannabis. And I was like, okay, well this is the second time now that this plant has been shown to us. And this was what I call pre Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay Gupta came out about Charlotte's Web and uh, Charlotte Figgy and Paige Figgy, who I've known for a really long time, and them using CBD oil for epilepsy. And that was when really the conversation broke loose and people started actually taking a look at medical cannabis. Well, this was almost a year prior to that when we actually started working with Ricky and Abby. And they brought us the documentary that's now on Netflix called Weed the People. And they asked us to be a part of this film. And so at nine months old, Sophie took her first dose of cannabis. And yes, there was THC in it on camera. And on that film, you can watch our lives unfold over six years. And what happened after that was just literally one miracle after another. We did put Sophie on chemotherapy. When she was a year old, the tumor, um, the cannabis, unfortunately, wasn't enough. We didn't know how to dose her. We had her at a super low amount. We had no idea what we were doing. We had we had experts that understood dosing. They understood how to teach us how to give Sophie cannabis in a way that wouldn't get her high. You can actually use THC um, and you can titrate it up very slowly and you can mitigate the psychoactivity and actually get to a really high therapeutic dose without the side effects. And that is, we have nurses that we um, give our patients access to. And, you know, they'll start on the THC side with like two and a half to five milligrams of THC. They'll keep you there for three to five days and then you'll go up and you'll be there three to five more days taking several doses a day and then you'll go up and your body builds this tolerance to it. I myself can take 50 milligrams of THC at night because I consume every night, but I don't even feel it. I feel it like a two and a half to three milligram dose, maybe a five milligram dose would make a beginner user uh, feel. And I do that therapeutically because I'm also monitoring my immune system through our research. And I also never get sick anymore. And I don't have the aches and pains and all, all the arthritis in my body has somehow magically disappeared. And uh, it's been like a really wonderful tool for me. So they helped us do uh, administer this medicine in a very safe way to our tiny baby. And her doctors were on board. The oncology team at Kaiser gave us full permission, which you'll see in the film. Mm -hmm. And we started this infant on weed, <laughs> which wow. was crazy. Yeah. So, okay. So then what happened, what happened from there as far as you uh, branching out into more making this a movement, right? So you were, you're on this documentary and then what, what happened? How did can of kids come about? So it was, um, I, it was so cool because yesterday I actually had one of the women in my office that's going to start working me with on the charity side named uh, Lauren Hammersley. She has a little girl named had a girl named uh, Hazel, Hope for Hazel, that passed away a few years ago. And she and I and a few other mommies were on this Facebook chat. This one guy had brought us all together because he was like kind of the underground connector of families using cannabis because it was so taboo then. And we were doing it legally because in the state of California, we could get a medical card for Sophie. But the judgment in those days was right. essentially worse than it is in today's Day and age. I mean, it was just a completely different landscape. So these women and I, um, we were, we had this thread going and it was just out of control. Like there was no way I could keep up with all these messages. So I was like, let's create a, a, a secret group. Let's, and I, you know, at the time I had a media agency, I, I marketing is my background, graphic design, social media, uh, public speaking. So I, that's, that's what I was doing for a living at the time. I had my own agency and we started a can of kids secret group. And you could only get in there if someone added you. You couldn't, it was, it was unsearchable. So we created a safe haven for families and dosing practitioners and growers and nurses and anyone who wanted to become involved in what we were trying to accomplish. They could do it in a safe way without worrying about, you know, getting in trouble because there were people from all over the world in this group in very illegal places that were desperate and were really seeing the medical benefits of this plant. So the, the group just kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And I said um, to my husband, I was like, you know what? We're really on to something here because we were beginning to see profound immunological responses in our daughter. Uh, we were seeing a brain tumor shrink in ways that the doctors could not explain. They, they, they told us she had 100% chance of going blind her first year in treatment. We maintained all of almost all of her vision until about a year and a half ago where she had a brain tumor surgery and a 
massive cyst formed and it created all this pressure in her brain. And it was after the release of all that pressure that about six weeks later, her, her vision started to decline and, and she lost a lot of it. Um, but we, we saved her vision because we shrank this tumor by 85 to 90% in 13 months, which they told us would never happen. We saw her go from needing a blood transfusion every single cycle. She would do four weeks on, two weeks off, four weeks on, two weeks off. Every cycle, she need, she ended up like nine blood transfusions over wow. um, a course of, you know, of, of like, you know, 10 months. Well, the last three months of treatment, she just stopped needing blood transfusions, which isn't, we didn't know this because the doctors ended up having to tell us that's not medically possible. You're, you're body just doesn't all of a sudden recover from chemotherapy and you all of a sudden just don't need blood transfusions when your body has been that weakened and is requiring so many of them. And then we started seeing her recover from these surgeries. Like she had a, a strabismus surgery in her eye and the doctor was like, yeah, you're going to see some oozing and it's going to take six weeks for the eye to straighten out. And she woke up and her eyeball was straight and she never so much as even had a piece of crust in her eye. And the doctor was like, okay, I've seen one, but I've never seen both together. And then she got pneumonia a couple of times and we took her into the doctor. They saw the pneumonia on the x-rays. They put her on the course of antibiotics that they do with cancer patients. They put her in the hospital. And by noon the next day, both times, she was having a dance party in her hospital floor and they're in the room and, and they were trying to figure out what was happening. And, and they wanted to deem it as a misdiagnosis, but yet they could see the pneumonia in the lung. So we went home with no antibiotics, like she was fine. Wow. And, and then she has a brain tumor surgery, which is what ended up leading us to our research, which I'd love to cover in a minute. Mm -hmm. Seven hour brain tumor surgery. She had the same exact surgery when she was little, when she was one to make sure it wasn't a more terminal aggressive tumor because it, it had a big growth spurt when she was little. And this, it was the same surgery, but far less invasive when she was a baby. When she was a baby, it took them a long time to do the surgery because it took them like four or five hours to get the, the, uh, all the, um, the needles in because she was so chubby. They couldn't get the the wires into her so that they could you know make sure she had mm -hmm. um, the propofol and and the, the IV fluids and so forth. They couldn't get the IVs in. So, but this one they were actually in her brain for like six or seven hours digging out a golf ball sized chunk of tumor, wow. and they cut her from the top of her forehead all the way to the bottom of her ear, same exact location when she was a baby. Took a four by four piece of skull off the same the same exact skull area from when she was a baby. When she was a baby, she was black and blue, in the hospital for five days, looked like she'd been in a boxing match, poor little thing. Mm -hmm. And this surgery, she you know, she woke up and she was of course cranky and didn't feel good. We finally got food in her, we got her her cannabis medicine, her entire life changed as soon as we got that medicine in her. The nurses couldn't understand what they were seeing and how quickly she'd made a turnaround. They documented in the charts, the next, you know, when the, when the shift change happened, the nurse told the new nurse, look, this little, what I just saw with this little girl and how she went from being really uncomfortable and a lot of pain and just grumpy to just being a normal kid. It was miraculous. Uh, just so you know, it was the cannabis that did it. And then the doctor came in to take the bandage off and he looks at her and he was like, Miss Ryan, she doesn't look like she's had surgery. That was literally verbatim what came out of his mouth. And I always like to test these doctors and be like, well, yeah seen this before and he was like you know if we have ever seen anything like this before it would be so rare that I can't explain it she had zero bruising wow her face zero signs of visible swelling if you touched like right around the surgery site you could feel it was like a little jelly but you couldn't visibly see it anywhere on her face she should have been in the hospital for three to five days, was released in less than 48 hours and told that she wouldn't be able to go back to school for one to two weeks. And her neurosurgeon came in and said, she can go back to school tomorrow. Or the next day, she's fine. Wow. That's so, incredible. Well, we know why now because yeah. of our research, which is super exciting. So yeah, let, let's dig into that. Yes, please. Can yes. you tell, can you tell them a little bit of how you're involved? I know I, when I was texting you about this podcast, I was like, Oh, I just heard a cannabis researcher at um, metabolic health summit, Dr. Yafai. And you're like, Oh yeah, we know her. We and so, yeah. I've seen that you're, you're involved on, sit on some boards and you're very involved with the research. So could you tell yeah. us a little bit more about your involvement there and then what the research is? Cause I know it's sure. still pretty limited in the U S because of legal issues. Right. So yeah. Yeah, fill us in. Fill us I in the impact. Around it, though. That, that, <laughs> that's the thing that I, I call myself the person who figures out how to drive around the potholes of life. So I, I figured that out. 
So, you know, just just going back like, you know, a little step with Canna Kids because that leads us into the research. That's what you know, all this stuff with Sophie is what made us decide to really shut down our media agency, focus our entire lives on medical cannabis. We knew we were on to something. We knew that this was a very, 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 very special plant. And we truly believe that that's why God gave us breath. We just do that's, that. We believe that's why we're on this planet is to bring this medicine forward. We believe Sophie has a message and we're her messengers and that she's just going to be fine through it all. And so far she has. And it was through working over the last six years in patients that we started to see not just in cancer, in all of these different issues in patients from autism, epilepsy, Crohn's disease, PTSD, fibromyalgia, MS, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, uh, neurological diseases, cerebral palsy, I mean, menstrual cramps, migraines, back aches, sleep issues, um, you know, schizophrenia even, if you can believe it. The amount of indications that we have seen this plant be beneficial for is exponential and reporting has has said that there are over some 500 different conditions and ailments that this plant can be beneficial in wow. so i was like which, okay. which is by the way sorry to interrupt but sure. you just listed off almost everything that the ketogenic diet also helps with and i think that's so you know you hit on no sugar but i'm like if you you just listed off basically everything that's been researched for keto and so yeah. i know ke and part of the reason i wanted to have you on here is if in case my audience isn't aware keto and cannabis are very complementary especially for <laughs> neurological and brain issues so anyway i just want to point that out okay keep oh, that's, going <laughs> that's an amazing point i completely agree and it all goes back to the immune system which mm -hmm. is what we're figuring out. Mm -hmm. So what was, uh, what was exciting about finding Dr. Jewett, who's my research scientist that we've been working, you know, hand in hand with was, um, you know, that, that here's this, here's this woman that, you know, is on this mission to cure cancer. And she, I call her my modern day Einstein. She is absolutely, absolutely the most brilliant and most beautifully hearted person I have ever met. This is not about money or fame or, or achievement for her as far as like it raising her up in the hierarchy of scientists. Mm -hmm. She just is tired of seeing people die. And as am I. And when we had all these patients and we were able to really look at all of these different diseases and track the information and work with the nurses and analyze the data, when we finally got connected to her and she agreed to help me create my own clinical trials for Sophie since there were none going on. And I was just like, I'm done. I'm, I'm sick of depending on science to help my kid. I'm going to do it. If nobody else is going to do it, I'm going to do it. And she was, you know, she was ready and on board to help. But what was so great is that we also had all of these other patients that we were seeing all these incredible successes in, and we had the data on them and we mm -hmm. understood what formulations they were taking because we were the ones making them. We understood the dosing protocols because we had been dosing patients our nurses had, I should say, for six years with these same types of diseases. So when Dr. Jewett agreed to take Sophie's live brain tumor tissue from the brain surgery that she had on April 23rd in 2018, it was the first step in what has led us to some of the most incredible findings that, that the cannabis world will have ever seen. And we're about to publish them within the next few weeks. The paper's almost wow. done written and the patents are already filed. Wow. And it's been through enrolling 17 of our patients, our Canna Kids patients that have been consuming our Canna Kids oils in varying stages of disease that we have uncovered all these really cool things. But how, what got us there was when Dr. Jewett started looking at Sophie's blood. So she gets her tissue, she puts it in humanized mice, not just regular mice, mice that pump human blood and mm -hmm. have the same blood brain barrier as human beings mm -hmm. and whose immune systems almost identically mirror that of human beings, making them a tiny human model, essentially. Wow. So the wow. failure rate in the science isn't 80 to 85%. It's more paralleled. What you wow. see in the mice, you expect to see in the human beings, which makes it go faster. So she, uh, she gave me these mice. Well, she didn't give them to me. They're still mm -hmm. UCLA, but she said, here you go. You're going to get these mice. There's no other mice like these in the world. They, they, this, this process and procedure was developed by the scientists here at UCLA that I was a part of. And these are the best research mice that money can buy. And so she starts growing Sophie's tumor, which was in itself a crazy experience because I, I had to fight the hospital to get it. And while my daughter was on the operating table, I was in the room with pathology, splitting up my daughter's brain tumor into different containers. Uh, wow. One 
shipped to Dr. Jewett, and then the other one to be shipped to store my tumor for cry so they could cryo-freeze it so that we could bring it back to life later as we needed more of her tumor for research. And, I, and I'm and i sitting there as a mother staring yeah. at this, this and like photographing this tissue. And wow. one more cool thing, National Geographic was here photographing it too. They followed, wow. they've been us for about six years now through photojournalism, and they documented the whole week leading up to the surgery or actually I think it was like two weeks leading up to the surgery and then the day of the surgery and then a few days after the surgery and so we've got all this this documented through photojournalism which is super cool that but is amazing I just have to stop and say what I'm sure everyone listening is saying like you are amazing that thank you, thank you for doing that well I mean I if I didn't nobody was going to and my kid is the air that I breathe I literally would lay in front of a moving train if it For meant sure. saving her one more ounce of pain. And I'm just not somebody who sits back and right. waits for other people to do stuff for me. I just right. do it myself. Because if you want to get some, something done, give it to a mother. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's how you get it done. So, <laughs> but what, what, where it all really shifted and changed was when Dr. Jewett looked at Sophie's blood. And she calls me up one day, and, and let me give you a little bit of information on Dr. Jewett so you understand the gravity of this woman. She has been a research scientist at UCLA for 30 years. She is um, a tenured professor. She's been published over 150 times in the top medical journals in the world. She discovered the field of natural killer cells. In those 150 publications, she has discovered that natural killer cells and the failure of that system is what leads us to getting cancer. And on my podcast, Saving Sophie, on iTunes and all the other outlets, like I'm sure yours is on, we have an interview with Dr. Jewett that talks about her entire path to this science, what the science means, where it's going, and why she believes she's going to bring forth cures for these diseases. And she's already published on pancreatic, breast, liver, lung, and glioblastoma is next because of the research that's been done in my daughter. And she's eradicating all these diseases in her trials. And she's now in human beings in Beijing, China, where in patient zero, she eradicated non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in 14 days with her supercharged natural killer cells that fix the natural, the broken natural killer cell system because when you have cancer, it's because it's broken. And a year and a half later, the guy is still cancer free with no side effects. Wow. With yeah. So <laughs> and, it's, and it's super crazy that I got dropped into this woman's lap, or is it? <laughs> because again, yeah. I believe we are on a mission here. I really do. Absolutely. Um, what we ended up finding with Soph was not only was her immune system functioning five from the neck down five times better than that of any healthy adult, but from the neck up, she had zero natural killer cells in her brain. Wow. Yeah. So. That's why us working together is just, it's so serendipitous because the discoveries that she's made in my daughter from the neck down have led us to understand that cannabis has the ability to turn the natural killer cell system back on, which wow. nothing in her 30 years of research has ever proven to do. And her, and my kid's immune system, again, she's been on cannabis since she was nine months old, works five times better than mine and yours, having never had a serious disease. It's impossible. She is, a, she is a kid with an immature immune system, should have been. Right, right. Cancer, and she'd been on chemotherapy for five years at the time. There was, there was, it was medically impossible for that to be possible. Wow. But it was because of the oils. And when Dr. Jewett started studying these other 17 patients, she started, and we did it in varying stages of disease and in varying, varying stages of cannabis consumption. Some were cannabis naive, where they'd never had a single dose of cannabis. Some were on treatment with chemotherapy and immunotherapy or what have you, and cannabis. And then some of the patients were four to five years past a terminal diagnosis when they should have been gone a long, long, long time ago, and Western medicine can't explain it. One of the boys, AJ, is actually in our film. He had osteosarcoma, 90 days to live, 22 tumors in his bones and lungs, zero chance of survival on Oxy and Norco every day to get out of bed. Within three days, he was off all the opioids. Within 90 days, he was cancer-free for the first time since he'd been diagnosed. And now five years later, he still hasn't had a single recurrence, but he's on our oils every single day. And Incredible. It's, it's, it's amazing. Amazing. So, so we started studying these patients, and what we found was what we expected. If they were cannabis naive, their immune system was broken. If they were on cannabis, their immune function had returned. And these kids, there was two kids that were terminal, that were four and five years past their expiration date. Their immune system was functioning better than mine and yours as well, even though one of them can't even grow hair. 
because he was so beat up by radiation, but yet his immune system is incredible. So wow. it was when Sophie ended up having that post-surgical cyst that I mentioned earlier that cost her her vision. Mm -hmm. We had to drain all this fluid off of her brain because it was causing so much pressure that it ended up leading to seizures and headaches. And, you know, we, we knew it was, it was possible. So we were prepared. We were able to get her right in and get 50 cc's pulled off of her brain right away, which it was, it was a blessing because we were able to, it was pulling on the side of her face. It was going through the crack of her brain tumor um, in her skull from her brain tumor and was coming out the side of her face. So we were able to pull all that fluid off without another a really super invasive surgery. Right. It was in that fluid that Dr. Jew had discovered that from the neck up, because we couldn't understand, it's like, why does Sophie have a brain tumor? Her immune system is that literally of an alien or a superhuman. I mean, she's really a superwoman. She like really is. <laughs> why did she have this tumor up here? Like it didn't, it didn't make sense, but the fluid is what led us to uncover that in her brain, she had zero natural killer cells at all, which wow. Dr. Stewart discovered the field and is the world leader in and has a therapeutic to fix. So it was through that and through working with Julian Marley, Bob Marley's son, whose little girl, who, his little girl, Kaveri last year ended up uh, passing away from a, a, a grade four brain tumor. And it was, they got out here, they flew out here to work with can of kids. They got out here at the nine month mark, which is how much time they'd given her to live. So she get, got to us really, really late. Um, and within two weeks of meeting them, she unfortunately succumbed to this tumor. But in that time we were able to get brain fluid from her as well. And so by looking at these two little girls and looking at what was going on inside of their brains, Dr. Jewett was able to then come up with a therapeutic for brain cancer that has now already gone through uh, in vitro, which is machine model. And in her in vitro trials, they've created these what's called spheroids, where they've replicated the micro environment of the brain in a bubble, which wow. basically means that when the tumor is in this environment, it's as if it's in a live human brain without the brain. Wow. And through using that and the humanized mice that have the same blood brain barrier as adults, we are now myself and another team are building a pharma company called Encore, and we intend on taking all of these patents to market. And the guys I'm working with are like the cell therapy guys in the country, wow. and they hope to be in humans under the Right to Try Act, which deems any terminal patient um, qualified to use any clinical trial that is in progress today, as long as it's passed the safety study as a therapeutic to try and save their lives. Amazing. So, terminal disease, you know, there's no chances left for you. We're, we'll have the ability to then bring these patients in. And in, you know, once we get this up and running, administer this therapeutic and hopefully save their lives. And also hopefully eradicate my own daughter's tumor, which is the end goal. Now we're not there yet, but the research is very promising and we are very hopeful. And now having both the um, you know, understanding what's happening in Sophie's brain, but also what the cannabis is doing to her immune system. We are now looking at combo therapies of using the supercharged natural killer cells along with cannabinoids. Right. And this probiotic that Dr. Jewett also created in her lab that kept a pancreatic cancer patient alive for almost five years, which is wow. a six to nine month end of life diagnosis. Only 2% of all pancreatic cancer patients make it even remotely close to five years. And this woman made it and shouldn't have because of, of this probiotic and the research that's happened with the probiotic and the natural killer cells is shown tremendous, tremendous synergy. And the research between the cannabinoids and the probiotic has additionally shown tremendous, um, uh, tremendous uh, synergy between the two compounds. So putting those three together, we're talking about trying and attempting to fix the immune system. Exactly. So wow. Well, it's not just cancer. We wow. believe this is going to be an opportunity for a lot of different diseases, because as I mentioned earlier, we're watching cannabis help over 500 different conditions, and we're understanding why that's happening now. Wow, that makes so much sense. I mean, anyone who knows a kind of a basic level of health optimization understands that the immune system is all reliant upon gut health. And so yeah. that's fascinating that she's using probiotics. I mean, it makes complete and total sense. Along. Saying? 
Right. And, and, and as far as I know, maybe you can enlighten us a little bit more about the bene benefits of cannabis, but I understand that it's a powerful anti-inflammatory as well. And is that the effect that it's having on the immune system or is there, do you have d any deeper insights there on how exactly it interacts with the immune system? Yeah. So when you're looking at inflammation, inflammation is the leading cause of a broken immune system. Mm -hmm. So when, when Dr. Jewett has been doing all of her research on NK cells, because the NK cells are the main driver of what's called the innate immune system. You hear all this stuff about T cells, but the NK cells actually drive the T cells. And the reason T cell therapy isn't a cure and it's only a life extender that only works about 20 to 25% of the time is because without fixing the NK cells, the T cells are only gonna do so much. Okay. So that's the problem with the T cell therapies. Mm -hmm. So when we're looking at what causes these diseases and how people get sick in the first place, the, the silent killer time after time is inflammation. Well, what causes mm -hmm. inflammation? Obesity, stress, mm -hmm. um, poor diet, uh, environmental factors from toxins and trauma, um, you know, genetic mutations, all of these things lead to inflammation in the body and the inflammation just wreaks havoc. It can cause all kinds of issues. Lack of sleep even causes inflammation. Lack of sleep can like makes your organs deteriorate 10 times faster if you're not getting seven to eight hours of sleep every day. I'm reading an incredible book um, about sleep right now that's really enlightening me on what what that affects you, which is why cannabis is also great as a sleep aid. It helps you sleep. It helps you sure. relax. It's an anti-inflammatory. Yeah. It helps process life easier. So it's a stress reliever. It's an immune system booster. It helps you relieve nausea. Um, it's We're watching it get rid of seizures. We're watching it help autistic children with all of the side effects that they're having from their autism, like rage and intestinal issues and, and issues with textures and focus and love and even speaking. <laughs> we've, we've actually seen a lot of children begin to consume cannabis and start talking for the first time in their lives. So it's, it's, it's basically what cannabis does. It helps regulate homeostasis. We have what's called an endocannabinoid system that's made up of CB1 and CB2 receptors in the body. We believe that there are more. We believe there's a CB3 there's, and possibly even a CB4. There's, there's a lot of research that still has to be done because this, this is the biggest system in the body and the only system that hasn't been taught in medical school all these years, which is crazy wow. to me. Wow. The endocannabinoid system. So CB1 is, is um, you know, mostly appear in the brain and there's a lot of receptors in the brain, which is why we believe it's been really beneficial for Sophie's cancer. And also cancers have these receptors on them as well that cannabis triggers, triggers these receptors and, and helps activate them so that they then start attacking the cancer cells and causing apoptosis or cell suicide. Mm -hmm. So the endocannabinoid system, you know, it's, it's brain, heart, liver, lungs, um, bone marrow, immune system. It, mm -hmm. it, we have this, these, these receptors all over our body. So when, when you consume can, uh, cannabinoids, it helps fix deficiencies. It helps ignite this system, which regulates homeostasis. For example, in children with autism, we find that there is an anandamide deficiency across the board with these children. Well, if you consume THC, THC actually becomes an anandamide in the body. So it's supplementing these deficiencies. And if you have a deficient endocannabinoid system, then you are even more likely to get disease. And the reason we think that we're seeing so much of the disease on the rise, not just because of the environment and the toxins and the pollutions, which are also a problem in the GMOs, but we used to actually consume cannabinoids on a regular basis through hemp. I mean, in the yeah. day, before the 30s, before William Randolph Hearst and Harry Anslinger decided they wanted to demonize this plant and use political means to basically fool us all and lie to us and convince us over the last 80 years that this is a, the devil's plant mm -hmm. and it's you know, the devil's lettuce, as they call it in the South. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, before that, this plant was being used for for in food it was being used for labor it was being used um you know in in a bazillion different ways And if you look back in the apothecary books even a hundred years ago you're finding hemp and cannabis in these books our livestock were eating hemp we had hemp seed in our food we had hemp oil that we were using um you know as a consumable and so we were supplementing the cannabinoid uh, deficiencies that we have in our body and it was helping us regulate that homeostasis and stay healthy that has been completely removed from our diet and the livestock diet and we think that if that were to 
then become part of the everyday consumable, which is why I plan on proving that everyone on the face of planet should be consuming cannabis in some form, whether it's just CBD, that's, you know, a whole plant profile with the other secondary and tertiary cannabinoids like CBG and CBN and CBDA and CBDV. And, or is it, or do you also need the THC in there? Because what we're seeing in the research and what we're seeing as far as activating the immune system, the synthetic that we have used um, that is a legal, um, a legal synthetic that, that is, is available without all the crazy hurdles. Because, And, you know, I mentioned earlier, I, I like to drive around the potholes of life. We were studying the blood of patients who consume cannabis and not bringing the cannabis into the lab. So that's how we got around that. Mm, wow. But it, you know, it, it's it's through looking at all of this that, you know, we believe we're going to be able to prove because of the immune system stimulation, the reactivation of the NK cell system, and also just history and what history tells us alongside the science that we hope to, to say, you know, you need to be taking X, Y, and Z every day to mitigate the risk of cancer, Alzheimer's, um, you know, arthritis, um, you know, severe, severe medical immunological issues. And that's one of the paths that we're on right now is to try and bring that message and bring that science forward. I'm very tapped into DC. I've got a lot of friends in the Capitol building and a lot of friends in, in Congress. And I really hope to be going back. I went twice last year and I've stayed in constant communication with these guys. And I hope to go back and present the science to Congress and to the Speaker of the House, Speaker Pelosi. And through that, then get to the Senate and hopefully get some stuff descheduled. Because it's time. amazing. Amazing. We are all behind you, girlfriend. It is amazing. I want to first, I want to say thank you for hitting so much on the science side, because I think that's so important for us to be able to deliver science because it's such a great messenger in a, in a world of fear around cannabis. You know, it's kind of like, oh, it makes me feel good. Not enough. Right. Like yeah. show me the science. Right. It's a great way to meet people where they're at. But I do want to hit a little bit on the spiritual component because yes. we talked about this a little bit before we started. First of all, I just have to say there is nothing that lights me up more than seeing someone get on their divinely guided mission and path. And it is so clear and so obvious that that's what's going on with you. And it's so often, it's almost always through our greatest lows, the lowest of lows, those really difficult challenges that we go through. If we can find, realize that that all happened for us to be part of our divine mission. Look, I mean, your soul is just alive and the things that you're accomplishing are probably beyond your wildest imagination seven years ago. If you had said, I'm going to go speak to the speaker of the house and I'm really involved with you. I mean, that would have blown your crazy. mind. Yeah. You would have been like, no, that's not ever going to happen. And it is happening because you're aligned with your soul's purpose. And I think that's so beautiful. And I do think part of that is because you use cannabis yourself. Yes. And I do want to talk about the spiritual component of these things now, as we wrap up the episode, because I also don't want to end this without talking about your daughter's eyesight. Right. Yes. And so we talked about this a little bit, um, on, on spiritually, what, what I'll just let you do it. Cause, um, I haven't talked so much about my experience with cannabis, but I'll say real quickly that it definitely enhance my relationship with my children and also with my mom. My mom just had a stroke and she is not getting her memory back. And it feels like a little bit of like, she's here, but she's not here. Right. And I'm so grateful that before that happened, she came to live with me after I got divorced about three years ago and four years ago. And I was starting to use cannabis at that time. And it was the first time I felt like I saw my mom for who she was with pure yeah. love, like the pure love of like a godlike love, right? Like yeah. a divine love. And I was like, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. And it really, really changed our relationship. And the same thing with my kids. I was like, I actually feel like I just stepped up to your level of connection yeah. right now. I really see you. I really, my heart is completely open. And so can you talk a little bit about your experience on the spiritual realm? In addition to all these medicinal benefits, all these helpful benefits, what has been yours and your daughter's experience on the spiritual level with cannabis? Oh my gosh, that's like a whole nother episode. I know, <laughs> right? There is so much that has happened along the way um, with that. And, you know, just to kind of go back to my upbringing, I was brought up Southern Baptist. So I've always been somebody that, like says my prayers and I, I haven't, I haven't been a church goer in my adult life, but I talk to God every day and I believe in God. And growing up, I studied the Bible and was baptized and did all that stuff. I have now, as I become older, I, I become more spiritual. I believe in an all loving God that loves everyone. I don't believe in a division of religion. I think that if you are a good loving person and you are doing positive things on the earth, I don't care who you worship, as long as you are living towards a life of, of, of true 
goodness and peace and you're trying to do good around you because I believe God to be all loving. I believe he loves all races, all colors, all sexual preferences. If you want to be transgender, bravo, be your true self. If you want to marry a man and you're a man, go for it because love is love. So I just want to make sure that like I, I make that clear because a lot of, you know, when you, when you talk about God as much as I do, um, and I'm Southern <laughs> by nature, people can, un, can, can sometimes misconceive that I may just be for, you know, Christianity and only Christianity. And I don't believe in other religions because that still exists. And that's just not who I am. I'm a very spiritual person. I'm very tapped into spirit. I've been getting downloads since I was 11 years old. Um, and I have had communication happening that I, that I couldn't control in the past. It is, I am getting better as I'm getting older and I'm really starting to understand mm -hmm. the messages that my spiritual family is giving me and the guidance that they're giving me. Mm -hmm. It's become mm -hmm. much clearer. And when Sophie was first diagnosed, um, why I say we're on a guided path with such confidence is because I had the most profound download I've ever had in my entire life and have since met two cancer moms who the exact same thing happened to them as far as the full body experience and the messages they were getting. It's, it was crazy. Wow. Um, and so I, I remember sitting on my couch with my husband. I mean, I remember this like it was yesterday and so was he. And I'm sitting there and I, I feel like this, it was kind of like, if you imagine the cold chills just like coming all through your body and, but, but you don't actually get the skin chills. Mm -hmm. It's more like an internal chill. It, it was very strange. It just felt like energy coming through the top of my head and out my fingers and toes. And what the message was, it, it was like, it was, you know, I heard a thought in my head, but it wasn't my thought. And what I heard was Sophie's going to be just fine. She has a message and you are simply her messenger. And within 72 hours, I was put in touch with Ricky and Abby and cannabis. Wow. Lights started flickering in the house and toys started going off every time we brought up cannabis. It was so weird. I mean, it was so bizarre. Nothing like that had ever happened. Every time during the day, we'd start talking about cannabis. Hummingbirds would start coming up to the window. Like, I mean, it was oh, wow. to the point where I, the decision that I made the, the hummingbirds were so profound in this story that the decision to start Canna Kids happened when I was on the phone with my first partner and I was looking out the window and a hummingbird came right up to the window and stared me in the face. And I said, guess what's outside my window? And I said, uh, and he said, what? And I said, a hummingbird. He said, okay, we're going to move forward with this. I'm going to give you a hundred thousand dollars. He knew, he knew how crazy it was every time he was in my home and the word cannabis was mentioned here come the hummingbirds. I mean, to the, my daughter even like walked out. I walked out on the balcony with her when she was like, not even one, she couldn't even talk yet. And we were like, hummingbird, hummingbird, where are you? Just, you know, just being silly. And I turn around to walk. I was like, they're not out here, baby. And I turn around to look away and she goes, ah, ah. like the kid couldn't even talk. And I see her look up and I turn around and here comes a hummingbird out of nowhere, stares us in the face and just shoots off. Wow. And the numbers start happening. The story around the 23s, uh, diagnosed on the 23rd in apartment 230 when she was dying. And 23 was my number. It's been my, my lucky number. I was a Michael Jordan fan and a basketball player. <laughs> and so 23 has been my number, like my lucky number for since I was like in high school. Um, diagnosed wow. on the 23rd, first good scan telling us she was going to live on the 23rd. A bunch of those, like anytime something really bad was going on, we were super scared. We would end up in, in a room with 23 in it. Then pre-op, um, when we went in for a brain tumor surgery, she weighed exactly 23 kilos. She was 23 on the sign in list. We were put in room 23. When I went to pull my little sheet to fill out my order for food, um, in the cafe, it was number 23. When we wanted to, and National Geographic was with us and saw all of this happen. When we went to look at how much time was three weeks away, cause I needed three weeks in order to, um, plan for the mice and have the mice ready. The exact three weeks from that day was the 23rd. When we went up to neurosurgery and we said, and we didn't tell them what date we wanted. We said, listen, we need three weeks. We got, this is what we're doing. We're getting our daughter in her own clinical trial. We're getting approval from the hospital to get the tissue. What do you have in three weeks from now? And she said, the only date we have is the 23rd. <laughs> and then the day before my daughter has this surgery at the breakfast table, she starts singing. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. That song has not been sung in my life in over 35 years. Her school didn't teach it to her. Her nanny didn't teach it to her. Uh, her in-law, my, my in-laws, nor Aunt, uh, Aunt Patty or Uncle Mike taught it to her. She wasn't around other children or other going on play dates at the time because she was immunocompromised. Like literally no one taught her that song. And if there was one song my grandmother who passed away, you know, many years ago was going to come through to me, 
and to tell me that everything was going to be okay. It was swing low, sweet chariot, or she'll be coming around the mountain. And then the very woman who ends up being our nurse, when we go in for brain tumor surgery, she was 28 years old and her name was Virginia. And that was also my grandmother's name. And, and then when she finished chemo, she got her, her last day of chemo was on the 23rd in room 23. And she rang the bell at an appointment that was scheduled for 2.30 PM in the afternoon. <laughs> so, you know, and then Dr. Jewett, you know, we, I, I landed in the lap of a woman who discovered the very field in which is the reason why my, my daughter has a brain tumor. And the, the continued messages that I have gotten and the signs, and everybody can get signs. Anybody can see signs from their spiritual family if they're present enough and clear enough to know right. to see them. They talk to us all the time. Yeah. I'm teaching my husband right now. Um, Super Attractor by Gabrielle Bernstein is a great book mm -hmm. for the secret language to the um, to the, the, the science called Science, the Secret Language of the Universe is another great book that mm -hmm. will help you kind of understand what I'm talking about and how you can mm -hmm. attract your own destiny. It's all about yeah. the attractions. You put out negative thoughts of any kind. Even if you're thinking about what you don't want, you're attracting that whether you mean to or not. Yep. The universe is a very incredibly beautiful place and spirit is all around us. I have spoken to my spiritual family through some of the most talented mediums in the country. There's no way they could have known what they knew. You can't research this stuff about me. It was stuff I'd even forgot about from my childhood. I know God to be real. And I'm now watching Bobby Vogel from ethericmedicine.com because I have to, I have to give her a shout out. We end up, she is actually helping me. I've been working with her for over a month now. I met her on the Montel Williams podcast. I was on Montel as was my daughter, Sophie. Bobby was the next guest. Montel fully backs um, Bobby completely, totally believes in everything that she does. And now I do too. Like she has taken all the pain out of the right hand side of my body that I've been trying to get rid of for 20 years, spending tens of thousands of dollars on chiropractors that no one could ever fix. One session with her, all my pain is gone. It was all emotional. She's now working on, I, I call her my spiritual bodyguard. She's been helping me with work. She's been telling me what I need to worry about, what I need to not worry about. And she's like, look, as soon as you stop holding on to these things that you don't need to be holding on to, your whole life is going to open up for you. And I did exactly what she told me to do. And exactly what she said was going to happen, happened. And now she's done two and a half sessions with my daughter who couldn't see any color but red and only part of the time Two weeks ago, my daughter's now identifying every color we put in front of her. She's seeing things on my bathroom counter she could not see before. If my husband goes in front of her and holds up uh, an object from a foot away, she knows what the object is. She, wow. she could not see that a week ago even. So I believe, you know, that, that number one, I believe that my daughter was born in order to help us bring forth potential therapeutics and cures potential cures, cures because we're not there yet. But I, but I believe that there is the possibility, the, a very great possibility that we're going to take a major dent out of cancer and really help patients in a mm -hmm. non-toxic way, have a healthier life. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that that's why Sophie's here. Bobby now believes that's also why Sophie's here. And I think that through Bobby, I'm one step closer to God and, and, and being able to use spirit to help guide me, not only in my research, but also help me help my daughter. And at the end of the day, if Sophie is okay, nothing else matters. Like that's, I just want my daughter to be all right. I want her brain tumor to be gone. I want her vision to be back. And I want this to just be a story we tell and a bad memory that we had that happened once. And that's the path that we're on. And I believe that is all, I believe it's a divine path. I, anybody who's around me doesn't deny that the signs that happened to me and to my family cannot be explained. They are too obvious and there are too many of them all the time. And, and now being able to align myself with someone like Bobby and, and help people believe that this is real and that yeah. this is truly possible because there are so many people that don't believe this. Right. I, I want to help her because I, people do believe me. They do trust me. They, I've established myself as somebody who is honest and who really just cares about helping people. And I also want to help her on her mission as she helps me on mine.
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for opening up about that. And, and guess what? Everyone listening, I am having Bobby on the podcast. Uh, she's one of my next guests. So you guys will get to hear from her and her incredible journey. I got to speak with her on the phone the other day and she's amazing. Um, and so are you girlfriend. Thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom, your journey. It's so inspiring. You're so informative and also like being able to open up completely openly about the spiritual aspects in addition to everything that you're learning on all the mechanical, all the amazing, changing the, the, the world of cancer, changing the laws, changing what's possible for people, (laughs) changing what people can have access to. It's so incredible. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything I can do ever to support you on your mission. I am here. We are all, I'm sure everyone hearing this and every single outlet that you've been on is just like, go girl, go, go, go. So sending all of our energy to you. Thank you. Thank you for doing everything that you're doing and for sharing it with us today. I really, really appreciate you being here well and thank you for giving me a voice because it's people like you that helps me get the message out there to the masses and it's all about changing perspective (sighs) thank you so where can people find out more if they want to find you so right now you can come to www.canakids.org, C-A-N-N-A, kids.org. We are about to launch CKSoul.com and CKSoulHemp.com, which is going to be, CK Soul will be a cannabis brand and CK Soul Hemp will be a nationwide hemp line that we're launching that will be uh, coming to market in the next, you know, four to six weeks. And then we also have our charity, uh, saving Sophie, which is saving and then S O P H I E dot org. And then we also have the Saving Sophie podcast. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you.